please subscribe to this channel and also tap the notification bell in order for you not to miss out on any of our videos i think it's a good thing that we are able to operate and rebuild quietly to the point of being classified as having abandoned the fight for our own freedom i cannot speak for all those whose photos appear on that tabloid the noise and attention was not helping, especially coming from our own ranks and from people we had thought were comrades and who truly wanted to see a veritably free Southern Cameroons. Time and experience has taught us all lessons. Now, whatever we do must be done with tact and a ruthless determination not to let the ball out of our sight again. And because we do not pull the crowd a significant reason to believe that one has abandoned the struggle. True, many who joined the struggle with a lot of enthusiasm have quietly dropped off out of frustration and shock at what people turned out to be. One cannot blame some as we ended being our own worst enemy. Many came in good faith but could not stand the filth, especially in the realization that some of our brothers were no better than the enemy regime we are fighting against. As a result, they have quietly faded away with all their brilliant ideas, experience, expertise and goodwill. Then there were those who expected quick gains and positions and who were quick to take shortcuts and betray the ideals, thinking that Boya was just a stone throw away. These ones would indulge in all kinds of deceit with the hope that by eliminating perceived rivals, they would have a smooth sail to Boya. They were the instrumental in destroying the social cohesion that was being built, creating enemies where we should have been friends. And then they realize that this is going to be for the long haul, and they have quietly exited. We will have to live with that reality. And then there was the group that joined because of the thrill of it. They blew with every wind regardless of the direction. They saw the struggle as a path to build social capital and fanfare. In fact, some demanded salaries as they thought those in charge were making a living of the struggle. But with these thrills come exhaustion, especially when you are standing on the stage and you realize that the audience has dwindled. Now with the struggle evidently lacking vision, a clear leadership and a concrete action plan, the thrill has died and they have quietly gone back to their day jobs. That is why one notices an almost dead social media with increasing propaganda coming from sponsors of the regime instead of our own narrative to educate our people. And finally, the third group of people who joined because they were hungry and angry. My political mentor had taught me one great lesson. He said, be careful of hungry revolutionaries. They are often very radical, advocate unnecessary violence as a means of showing off their commitment to the revolution. But it is when this hunger goes away and the jaws fill out that you can tell if they are truly revolutionaries or just hungry mouths that were spewing angry words. With the struggle, they managed to find a new pasture, moved on to new countries, got better jobs and started a family, in the process quietly exiting the scene. Their priorities have changed and that is life. All liberation struggle must have gone through these. Anyways, whatever route we all have taken, my appeal goes to the true fighters and believers of our liberation struggle. We must never let a few rotten potatoes spoil the whole pack. Finally, there are our brothers, sisters, fathers and mothers who have lost their lives as a result of our struggle to live as a free people. That is a true sacrifice and no true freedom comes without sacrifice. What will be most painful is to wake up one morning and realize that all these sacrifices we made were in vain and that we quietly resigned ourselves to our special status as glorified slaves in a system that clearly has marked us for a democratic and diplomatic abattoir. Whenever we think of giving up, we must remember that this is not another job from which you can just resign and get another job tomorrow. This is not changing the school of our children because you don't like the face of the teacher. This is not a decision to change your church and become Pentecostal because you think the Catholic Church preaches boring sermons and offers no prosperity sessions. Given what some of us have been through since the start of this liberation struggle, the easy way out should have been to down our tools and run long ago. But abandon it to where? To what? A new job? A new car? A new school? There are things you cannot abandon. You push until you succeed. We will triumph or die trying.